Welcome, Pewter Report readers, viewers, and listeners to a brand new edition of the Pewter Report podcast, energized by Celsius, the official energy drink of the Pewter Report podcast. It is a Wednesday edition of the show. Want to say hi to all the Pewter people that are filing in and entering the chat as we get ready for a very exciting episode. We're keeping it defensive heavy once again, as joining us on the show in a little bit will be Bucks defensive tackle. Will Golston, and separately, outside linebacker, Yaya Diaby, who have both been on the show before, and they are kind enough to be returning again for today. So, a lot to get into. I'm your host, Matt Matera. Join with me is the face that runs the place at pewterreport.com, SR Scott Reynolds. And Scott, we had a great conversation with Servasier Dennis on yesterday's show. Highly recommend to everybody checking it out if you haven't yet. Looking forward to talking to two more Buccaneers today. Yeah, it's a defensive doubleheader. Will Golston will be joining us in the first half hour of the show for about 15 minutes. And we're going to have Yaya Diaby, Yaya Diaby, coming on at 4.30 to talk with us uh, as well. Um, so um, it, my side of the ball, I love it. I love the defensive guys. Not to uh, knock the offensive uh, Buccaneers, but uh, we always like having some defensive guys on. And, um, you know, it's it's interesting. Um, before Will gets here, we'll, we'll talk about uh, another defensive player that um, – uh, made a top 30 visit. This is a, yeah. a guy that's been in our mock drafts before. We've been high on him. I've been high on him for a while now. I've been a, a Georgia Bulldogs fan. Uh, but uh, Tyke Smith, who I think is an absolute Todd Bowles defensive back. I, I love mm -hmm. this guy. Played safety, played uh, nickel uh, for, for the Georgia Bulldogs. Obviously, Todd's son, uh, Troy, goes to Georgia, where he'll probably be a starting linebacker this year. Uh, and uh, that'll be exciting to see. But uh, Tyke Smith, uh, the latest top 30 visit in uh, Tampa Bay. You know, Matt, they've had a lot of, of, of defensive players in for top 30 visits, more than maybe I even expected. I don't know about yeah. your thoughts on that. And then right before that, Jackson Powers Johnson also in for a top 30 visit. The only offensive lineman that we know of, not to say that they haven't had offensive lineman inside the team facility. But the interesting thing is that's uh, that's the only known offensive lineman that has been to Tampa Bay. That's not to say that, because I, I think we're, we've nailed what, about 15 of them? We've got half of the top 30 visits so far? Yeah, around that. that sounds about right. Yeah, so it's interesting. And maybe they've had five or six other offensive linemen in, but for a team that we're forecasting could potentially double up at the position, right? Get a, get a center to upgrade over Robert Hainsey, get a guard to step in uh, and fill that, that uh, opening at the, the left guard spot. Um, you know, that's, that's uh, that wouldn't surprise me or you. Um, and, and I, I don't think it would surprise a lot of Buccaneer fans out there, but surprising perhaps that they have not had more offensive linemen and at least that we know of. And of course, Tampa Bay is one of those teams they really do try to keep it secret. There are teams like the Dallas yes. Cowboys that just about broadcast it. We've had these players <laughs> in for visits and all of that, right? They they make the list yeah. public. But well, to be fair, but, Jerry Jones loves the the publicity around it, and the Cowboys yes. this year kind of need to publicize everything because a lot of their fans <laughs> were getting on their case about doing nothing in free right. agency and <laughs> and losing a number of guys. But yeah, Jackson Powers Johnson, of course, was the big name we've been speaking about a ton on the Pewter Report podcast. Yeah. He is. A lot of Bucks fans' favorites for offensive linemen, not even offensive linemen, just draft prospects in general that they want to see come to Tampa Bay. So I saw a lot of hands up in the air social media-wise. Mm -hmm. I were very excited about that move. And Tyke Smith, uh, just a part of that, that group of Georgia defensive backs that I think we've all gotten a little bit giddy about yeah. based on you know playing with Todd Bowles' son, Troy, um, over at Georgia. So Todd having a little more expertise about the Georgia Bulldogs and maybe some other coaches and organizations um, around the room. I think even though the Bucks have done a very nice job kind of building out their cornerback and safety room, even after trading cornerback Carlton Davis to the Lions, um, and obviously there are some, some movements and, and changes at safety, I think they've done a solid job uh, going about filling out the mm -hmm. rest of the room with some good backup guys and you have your starters in place. 
But man, it, it would be fun to just see another high flying safety out there that can kind of do a little bit of everything um, in, in this in this Bucks defense, or another corner to throw into the mix that just breeds competition come the summer when training camp gets here. But two fairly well known names, I would say, Jackson Powers Johnson, of course, is is really going to move the needle for the Bucks and their fans. Oh, no doubt. And, and the, the interesting thing, too, is, is, you know, they've had two guys that really play nickel in there in, in the, the team facility for these top 30 visits. Mike Sainer still, who is an absolute stud of a defensive back, started his career at Michigan as, as a wide receiver. Very athletic guy. Not the biggest guy. Kind of reminds you of maybe a little less rocked up Jordan Whitehead. Not as muscular, not as big, but hits hard. Kind of in that Rondé Barber vein, right, where he's just always around the ball. I think he had six interceptions this year, including one in the national championship game that he almost returned for a house call against Washington to end that game. And this guy is he is the leader of that Michigan team, not just the defense, but the entire team. I mean, he is he is a kind of a, a you know, a tour de force of a football player and just a, a big time playmaker. And I think, you know, we talked about. Robert Hainsey being, you know, an okay, serviceable center, right? Last two years, you know, you could find worse guys out there, right? He's not Ryan Jensen by any means. Same thing can be said about the nickel position, right? Christian Isian, undrafted free agent, okay guy, had an okay rookie season, started off with a bang, yes. first two games, two interceptions. And after that, it was kind of crickets, right? Uh, was solid, but not spectacular. Hit kind of a rookie wall in the middle of the season. He'll admit to that. Todd Bowles pointed that out. But any place you can upgrade, and let's yes. face it, in this Todd Bowles defense, which is really a 4-2-5, it's nickel uh, 75% of the time, mostly, uh, that's a starting position, right? So you can get a guy, I'm not saying in the first round, but in the second round, uh, if it's Shane Rastill, if he's, if he's there, or maybe on, uh, you know, day, late day two or third round, maybe early day three, fourth round, you get a guy like Tyke Smith from Georgia, Throw them into the, the, the mix. Javier Thomas signed a one-year deal. Christian Izian, again, undrafted free agent. You know, you're always looking to upgrade your roster. And, and I wouldn't mind Sainra Still or Tyke Smith, either one of those top 30 visits, joining this team uh, this year. Oh, a absolutely. Don't get me wrong. I, I like Christian Izian as a player, but he's a guy that it's good to have him in your back pocket, not as like the ace in the hole that you could play this card, but you're comfortable knowing – that you can turn to him if you need to, because above all else, he's a hustle player and it's going to yeah. give you more than 100% when he's out there. But of course, he does have his limitations. There is a reason why he was an undrafted free agent. He doesn't really have the height, and his play did taper off a little bit after he came firing out with a couple of interceptions and, and big plays. So it definitely should not preclude the Buccaneers from going out and upgrading at the position. Right. I mean, if Christian Isian's like your fourth string or even fifth string guy, yeah. <laughs> I feel great uh, about that depth. I would be pretty, pretty happy about that. You obviously don't want to go into the season having to play your fourth and fifth string guys. But as we know, it's the NFL and injuries happen mm -hmm. at any moment at any time. So you have to be prepared um, no matter what. So that's why as we get to the super chat from Rev Fish, thank you very much <laughs> for the four ninety nine super chat. Talking about another position where the depth it's certainly a good topic of conversation because you have a lot of young players and especially yeah. a player right here in, in Payne Durham that if he can take a big step this season, that'll go a long way for the Buccaneers with just figuring out and understanding what they have in their tight end, tight end room. So he says tight end Payne Durham last year, blocking in pros totally different than college. How does roughing the passer differ? Uh, Yaya was awesome on the Bucks cruise, by the way. I think what he means is he, I think he he says rushing the passer on on the yes. next super chat. Yeah. Um, so that's more of a question for Yaya Diaby, and we'll get to that, that question when uh, when Yaya joins us around four thirty. But uh, when it comes to Payne Durham, yeah, I, I think this whole tight end room really needs help in blocking. We even saw Co Keefe, who was drafted to be the blocking tight end, regress as a blocker last year. You know, and and maybe that wasn't John Van Dam's forte as you know, as a position coach, the, the blocking aspect, the, the tight end, uh, you know, being that, that sixth offensive lineman, if you will, at, at the, yeah. the line of scrimmage at the point of attack. And I think Justin Peel, who played tight end for years in this league, 
has the experience to maybe take this group to the next level. Right. And, and yeah. I, I'm not, I'm not sure if, if it'll be a situation where you've got, um, you know, Kate Otten and Payne Durham, all these guys being, um, you know, world-class blockers, but they need to improve. That's the biggest thing they need to improve. And, and uh, you know, I, I think that, that that can happen, you know, um, with better coaching and better technique. Oh, no question about it. And it'll be fun to see the little, you know, the little tweaks that offensive coordinator Liam Cohen will bring to this offense and specifically in the tight end room. Like, as we've talked about before, it does look like that there's going to be more of a uh, one tight end setup versus the two tight end setup that we saw a lot last year with Dave Canales. But again, that's a boost for the Buccaneers, whether it's either going one tight end or just having Liam Cohen, who's an experienced play caller going back to his days, not days, even last season um, with Kentucky and having that experience in the NFL. I'm very excited to see what adjustments, because there'll be adjustments here and there that may not even be drastic to, you know, the casual fan. Like when we had that conversation, Scott, a couple of weeks ago with Greg Cosell on the show, and you asked him like, what is kind of something you can explain to the average fan of how different this offense is going to be while yeah. also not being crazy different at the same time. So um, definitely in that tight end room could be something a little bit different. Maybe Payne Durham again, we haven't seen him like working out this off season, how he's looking and how much bigger that he's gotten. I actually saw him from far away at a lightning game, not too long ago, oh, yeah. but nonetheless, <laughs> uh, so he's been staying in the Tampa Bay area. That's for sure. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we have Will Golston here and I think he's connecting via audio. We'll see if we can get him with there video. He there he is. Where's big Will? Let's uh let's add Will to to the chat here. We're gonna grab a, a picture here of uh big ninety two back for year one two back for year twelve, and right. um, you know we're, we're not we're not supposed to have favorites in the media. We're not. I put, I put this on on X the other day when he resigned. We're not supposed to have favorites. We're, we're supposed to be impartial and neutral and objective, and we are objective. I mean, when when Will plays bad. We'll, we'll say it right when like, when he, like when he like when he, he didn't get a sack this year, but he got an interception. Right. So uh, so we will will be objective, but we would be remiss if we if we told the truth, if we didn't tell the truth and said that, that Will is one of our favorites at Peter Report because he's a tremendous quote. He's a tremendous guy. He's a tremendous teammate. And for going on 12 years now, he's a tremendous Buccaneer. So Will Golston. Friend of the program, welcome back to the Peter Report Podcast. We appreciate it. How you guys doing? Glad to be on. Doing yeah. fantastic. Scott, to answer the tremendous, also uh, tremendous outfits as well. Love the hat and love the shirt. I'm a big <laughs> Seinfeld fan uh, myself, so loving the get-up right now. Thank you. Thank you. So I want to start off, what brought you back so soon, Will, because you waited until like the day before training camp to sign last year? I was same as last year. wasn't no set um, time with it. I just... Figured I'd just sign, get it, get it going. Stay yeah. awake all the time. My my kids kept asking me what I'm doing, so <laughs> <laughs> trying to push the envelope a little bit. Just curious, Will, did you consider playing anywhere else besides the Buccaneers? You are, you obviously have ties to uh, you know Detroit and, and the state of Michigan, but just wondering about that. Uh, consider you always consider all your options when you have options, but I don't think I would want to play anywhere else if that's the, yeah. the true answer. What if the Lions were to come calling? Because I mean, you know, they're they're certainly a contender. You guys found that out last year, and that that's your home state, you know, up there. And and uh, uh, you know, they're they're winning. Um, if they would have sweetened the pot, is is that something that would have tempted you? Or are you just just a Buccaneer man now in, in year twelve? Like, I'm definitely that? a Buccaneer man, uh, but plus I think like that's way too close to home. Like here, yeah, Tampa. I'm still I still have a lot of privacy. I don't think I would have the same privacy if I played in Detroit. Right. Speaking of the Lions, you guys were 0 2 against them last year. How tough was was that for you personally? And then what is it gonna take to kind of figure out the puzzle that is Jared Goff and, and to beat these guys? You got them on the <laughs> schedule again this year. Um <laughs> it, it. It's a little sore during the offseason losing to them two times in a row because 
it's not the first time I heard that now. So, and then right. <laughs> uh, I think out of fun at the end of the playoff game, because I'm like, oh, we're not playing anymore. First yeah. time I ever commented on somebody commenting on Instagram, it was talking about Rashad for the little dance he was doing, but I gave him the okay for it. So, but yeah. that's in the past. But um, he's a, a dynamic He's a playoff quarterback. Been to the Super Bowl before. Uh, so I think just being able to hone in on those keys, those little minerals that we had during the game, I think we get better and better. All of the young guys got more reps, more snaps. They know what to do. They know the scheme. They know how to play. They know what's expected. So I think that all of the games that were harder last year, I think they should be easier, theoretically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and yeah. The, 40, the 49ers, too, right? I mean, that you know, this would be the third year you're facing San Francisco. I think you have them on your turf this year for a change after going out west twice. But uh, what's it going to take to – you made some progress, right, from kind of the blowout two years ago. This was a much tighter game in uh in 2023 but but uh what is it going to take to to beat the 49ers and really establish yourself as as a, as a true threat in the nfc the same thing that uh, i just said about the lines taking that mentality understanding your keys and fundamentals knowing that guys are stepping up ready for that role ready for that next big step uh and just executing you know mm-hmm. just being able to execute at a high level all the time i know it's going to sound like uh you know, your regular meat and potatoes, but legitimately the NFL is lost on mental errors. Like when you yeah. close game, yeah. one, of the, one to three points. So. Yeah. Uh, Will, as we kind of already talked about, you you signed with the Bucks a little bit earlier this year. So this does allow you an opportunity to get in the building a little bit more. Obviously the off-season programs just started. Um, have you been having conversations with, with some of your teammates? What's the overall vibe of this group heading into 2024? Because you guys – did make some noise last year in the playoffs, but it still feels like there's a lot of meat left on the bone and you guys can go even higher this season based on, you know, the group that came back and the group that's still there. For sure. Actually, one that I talk to the most uh, is Logan. I talk to him a lot and we've been sharing. Like, I, I've conversed with him because he's still in my book. He's a sensational player all the time. I talked to, I saw Kalijah Canty out. Uh, yeah out of town so and i know he's working hard all the time talk to vita i talked to most of the defensive line guys you know yeah the room that's those those the bros i talked to all those guys and the mindset never changes when it comes in it like we trying to win a championship trying to be able to be consistent be the reason we win yeah and that you know you're you're not shy when it comes to your praise for Logan Hall. I think last time you're on the Peter Report podcast was was after he was drafted and you, you were really kind of hyping him up and uh you know you you like this kid's mentality the edge he has and all of that at, at the same time you know that this is a production driven business and, and the production really hasn't been there yet for logan hall but what do you see in logan hall that maybe others don't see will oh, well, i'm there with him in practice every day uh, i think his mentality is maturing you know because when you're a young guy coming into the league you don't necessarily know you know this the real harsh part about the NFL, you know, like it is production based, you know, coming from college. I think usually for young guys like that coming in and developing into that role, this is probably the year the the switch is going to flick, you know, because he's been able to contend against NFL offensive linemen. We know he can win the one-on-one rush. I think just putting everything together and having that confidence in itself, I think that should be, he should be able to flourish this year. The other thing too is is you know he, he came in at 280 pounds. Right? Yeah. Um and and as someone, man, I've seen you. What was the lowest you've been in terms of your weight? Because you you've had to fluctuate um to play a four three end, to play a three four end, defensive tackle. Um yeah. w- what have you been down to? Like 255, 260? 255 with Lovey Smith during right. this second time of year, OTAs. Yeah, and then you've been as high as over 300. Where have you been at, in terms of the over 300? The highest is 318. 318. I mean, oh, I mean, that's, that's, that's a shift. That's yeah. huge, right? And so that's like you Jonah than, Hill doing different roles in movies. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> you more than anybody know how difficult it is to have to either drop weight or gain weight and then learn how to move and and, and operate, right, at with, with – with putting on or losing 20 some pounds, right? It's, it's not that easy. You have to get used to that. Don't you? 
Uh, definitely, like, that mobility, because you think if you play at one weight your whole life or your whole career, you know how to move, you got the, everything is rolling, you got to yes. relearn how to control your body at a high level and per- perform yeah. and produce. It's extremely hard, actually. I never thought about it until you asked that question, but, yes, yeah, that's one of the biggest struggles with going up and down. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's it's a two-way street with you and, and Logan Hall. You, you're in his corner, and, man, he appreciates the heck out of you. Uh, you were able to to gift him uh, an autographed Will Golston jersey, uh, yeah. right? As, as the end of the season, we actually have a video of that. Now, would you now would you play that real quick? Yeah, absolutely. Let me pull it up in just one moment. All right, yeah. Here is Logan Hall talking about you, Will. What does it mean to to get something like that from Will? Because I mean, he's he's a bit of an icon around here. He's been here so long, you know. Yeah. Um... It means the world to me, and you know, I've been bugging them since last year to get one. I didn't get one, uh, but it means a lot. So I'm definitely going to frame that, put it up. Uh, yeah. He's one of those guys that really is kind of taking you under his wing. You guys are similar body types. I know that's been helpful to come in here and see, hey, this is what it's supposed to look like, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, what has he meant to you and your development here these last couple of years? Uh, you know, I can't speak enough to how much he's helped me. Uh, you know, he was like a big brother. Anytime I'm down, he keeps me up. Any questions I have, any any anything I need, you know, he's there. Uh, he's available. He's willing to help. Great dude. So that that jersey that you autographed for Logan, uh, you can see him just beaming over that. Um, says Logan, you are one of the coolest laid back dudes I know. I know the future is bright with you. This is year two. I know all the rest will be all pro. Nobody can F with you. I'm calling it now. You'll be the best. All love. Hit me up if you need me. Will Golston. So, uh, you know, th- th- this is kind of a make or break year for him, right? I mean, there's there's no bones about it. You've kind of been in some of those those years yourself uh, here in Tampa, right? It's a production-oriented business where uh, you got to rise to the occasion, right? How is he looking physically? You said you've seen him in the building. And uh, is his mindset ready to attack this year? Don't think we can get his audio at the moment. Okay, you there, Will? We can see him. Yeah. I can't hear you. All yeah, right, he's yeah. going to leave and he's going to come right back. Yeah, exactly. We'll do that. <laughs> hey, we do the show live. Sometimes um, sometimes these things happen, but, yeah. you know, that's... Technology is uh, great when it works, and it's interesting, right? Because yeah. with, with Will Golston, he has played with so many... Uh, players, right, from Indomitian yeah. Sue to Vita Vea to, you know, to Logan Hall. Do we have you now, Will? Yeah, I'm sorry. Well, I, that's why yeah. I got invest in a laptop. No worries. Hey, no, no worries. worries that's, uh, yeah. hey, you do the show live, sometimes technological things happen. So yeah. all good. Exactly. But but just it, how how has he looked? Is he, he look bigger? I mean, we saw some big gains from him physically last off season. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. He's going to be way bigger. He's going to be way stronger, too. He's training at the same place I train at, uh, Trench Academy. So they work they work you hard in there. And then he's, <laughs> he's doing the trench, and he's also doing the off-season program. So that yeah. that double up. And then he's learning how to take care of his body now, too. So, yeah. like I say, like, this should be the year that he flourishes in the league. Yeah. Why? Where, are you, where are you at in terms of, of your weight? Um, right, right now? Yeah. I, 315 or well, 314 and some change. I just I literally just yeah. got off this game. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. Why was it uh so important for you to be a, a mentor, not just to Logan, but some of the other young guys on the defensive line? And who were some of the guys when you were getting into the league that kind of paved the way for you? Uh I, G definitely paved the way a lot. Clinton McDonald did, Michael Johnson, uh it's a plethora of guy. Robert Ayers for sure taught me a whole bunch of lessons. But yeah, the reason why I try to pay it forward is some guys I played with didn't necessarily help me to stay in place. <laughs> so I, I vowed to not be that type of vet. You know what I'm saying? I want to be able to sharpen the man next to me as he sharpens me. Because if I can't give you 100% of myself on the field and compete with you and still give you 100% of who I truly am as a man, I don't think that it, like, I don't, I don't think that's a good quality. Yeah. I want to be a good quality person. You know, the Respect interesting, that. the interesting thing is, is, you know, there's 11 starters on, on defense, right? There's 11 guys out there, right? There's six or seven, you know, including some practice squad guys, maybe a couple more in your defensive line room. 
but there's really only about two or three blue guys on a roster. They don't have to have the C on the chest. They don't have to be team captains, but they're blue guys. They're guys that that just hold everything together behind the scenes. That resource guy being able to, you know, to impart some wisdom, to share some experience, lift somebody up, right? Just that great teammate. And that's what Jason Light has has called you, one of those blue guys. How how cool is that to, you know, to have that moniker because you know that 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 says something really about your importance to this team, not just what you do when when you're you know, in between the lines and wearing the jerseys on Sundays, but but I mean, in the building and the practice field and everywhere else. I think that's huge because uh, at the end of the day, football doesn't last forever. I know I'm going into year twelve, which is rare, but football doesn't last forever. But the personality and the legacy that you leave behind does. So. Like I say, my kindness or my willingness to be able to help somebody else may cause a domino effect. And I feel like that's – it's not just me in the locker room at all. Yeah. I think why we have the culture we have now, the community that we have now, everybody – can, we can hold each other accountable to a different type of level and standard without right. having to feel like, like, oh, man, this guy's riding me. No, we brothers at the end of the day. Your, like the way you do your jobs make either makes me do my job better that's it, actually. It's no other. The way that you perform helps me perform better. Yeah. Now, a part of being a, a great teammate and the fun of being a great teammate is you get to celebrate with the other guys when someone makes a big play. And I know that not just your teammates, but all of the city of Tampa Bay was going absolutely wild on a particular Thursday night game in Buffalo <laughs> when you had a huge moment getting an interception against the Buffalo Bills in that game. It's not all the time you see a D lineman get an interception. Can you walk us through uh, that moment and kind of like what's just going through your head during the play and, and after it as well? So it was a play action pass. I had contained, so I knew I couldn't go anywhere else. I had to go outside because he's a very mobile quarterback, an elite quarterback. Yeah. So I'm just standing outside, boom, and I see him throw it. And I look up, I said, man, there's the ball. <laughs> Nobody going to go after it, huh? <laughs> okay, <laughs> let me go get it. You almost had an interception earlier in your career, right? But Chicago. you got robbed. Alter and Vernon, pass interference against Chicago. I think I right. ran like 20 yards. And the only reason I remember is the running back for Chicago at the time was Jeremy Langford. Yeah. And we went to college together. That's right, Michigan passed. State guy. Yeah. <laughs> Should have stiffed armed him. But I'm glad it counted this time. Yeah, exactly. So um, uh, we'll get you out of here because you, know, you you got kind of a tight schedule today. We have Yaya Diaby waiting in the wings here, but we got the, we got the veteran on here first. Uh, <laughs> uh, when it comes to Ty Bowles' message to the team to start the 2024 season on Monday, what what was said and 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 how did you and your your defensive teammates uh, receive that message? I came late that day actually because I signed that day, so I yeah. signed after the, after the meeting. <laughs> So I can't, I want to be honest with you. Um, yeah. But just knowing Coach Bowles, I, I can understand the message that he delivered because it's stuck with me since he's been our defensive coordinator, being able to start fast, not worrying about what's going on on the outside, worry about what's going on internally and be the best player and best man as you can be. It's the type of guy that he is. But I'm not 100% sure. Don't quote that message. Yeah. That's the kind of man that he is. And, and one last thing for you, uh, Yaya Diaby, uh, who's coming on, you know, right, right after you here, uh, just a tremendous rookie season, seven and a half sacks didn't start until halfway through the season for you guys, but seven and a half and, and was able to really come on. And, and, uh, and I think you appreciate his run stuffing ability and those tackles for losses, just as much as you do those sacks that he produces. He's, he's a bigger guy, maybe a tick faster than you, but, but what do you, what do you think about Yaya's, Yaya's ability? And, uh, and what do you see in his future here in 2024? Yaya came in looking like a, a four-year veteran, just to let you. It's like from the physique-wise, he came in already able to handle those blocks and do all of the things that he's been doing, sensational talent. Um, I think the sky's the limit for a guy like that, right? You see him yeah. comes in young, yeah. not necessarily knowing everything, but being willing to be able to perform at that level, do what's asked of him, one of the kindest guys I know, one of the most vicious and violent guys on the field as well, so I like guys like that kind outside the field but vicious on the field i think the sky's the limit for that guy matt any other uh, final questions before we let big will go uh just really how, how do you envision your role for uh 
on, on the defensive line this season? Do you think it'll be similar to last year? Or what do you kind of want to bring into into year 12 with the Bucks? I just want to be a tool that's used in whatever way that I'm used. Uh, I will appreciate it. I accept whatever role that's given to me. Um, it be uh, talking to guys, keeping them, keeping their hair right, being able to perform on the field, off the field, whatever's asked of me. I really pride myself on being the kind of guy to put my head down and just go to work and do what's asked of me, you know, follow the rules and success will follow. Lunch pail guy. Yeah. Yep. I, I, I do. I got one more for you here. Just, I can't, I can't let this go a little bit here, man. All right. So last year, Derek Carr comes to the New Orleans Saints and they were crowned the NFC South champions, right? I mean, you guys lose Tom Brady, you have Baker Mayfield's in Tampa, whatever, whatever, you know, it's, the rain is over. It's it's the Saints' turn to you know to to rule the roost now. And uh, lo and behold, Atlanta Falcons make a move. They get Kirk Cousins, and man, Will, sorry, once yeah. again, you're you got to settle for second because the NFC South is going to belong to the Atlanta Falcons. That's what the national media is already saying. That's what Vegas is saying. I know Todd Bowles doesn't want you guys to listen to the outside noise, but you guys you guys hear it. You do see it. it I know you don't take it terribly seriously because you're focused on your team as you should. You know, it's it's focusing on you guys getting better, not what the other teams do. But at the same time, does this help you guys in the weight room a little bit, a little bit of disrespect, being that underdog, embracing that, getting that chip on your shoulder? Does that does that show up at all? Uh, I think I'm biased in that the, for, the way you formed the question. But uh, for me personally, I don't care what anybody says. Everybody got – I have planes until I get punched in the mouth. It's about how you deliver the blow and how you take the blow. Do you curl up and shelter yourself, or do you go head first and just keep going until you knock them down? So, uh, yeah. sensational talent and Kurt. You know, we played together as well. Uh, Atlanta Falcons right. is a great organization. So, the whole NFC South, I think, is the best, you know, division. So, um, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> I love it. Well, we get to see you for year 12, and we're excited about that. I know Buccaneer fans are as well. Yes, so we you are. made my day when the Bucks re-signed you the other day. Thank so, you, man. Uh, yeah. This is yeah. my Thank first so podcast much. I have been on since podcasts really came out, by the way. Like, I've only been on your podcast. Show. I haven't been on anybody else's. Well, we appreciate that. That, that means man. a lot. It's very, very special to us. You're an OG. That's back when my kids were little. Now they're all Damn. in college, <laughs> you know, but – but uh my wife Ashley and and Caden and Logan and Jillian and Ellie. So this is you know from years ago. Uh, That's the real crew camp. right there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm I'm taking the picture, obviously. So, but uh, and we <laughs> we always appreciate having you on. Appreciate thank chatting you. with you always in the locker room. You're such a stand up guy. So yeah, just, thank, thank you on, so much for your time, Will. Appreciate you. Yeah. Thank you, congrats guys. on resigning. I, I appreciate y'all. Have a yeah. great day. Appreciate you it, man. Well. Thank you, Will. Yep. So that is Will Golston, and um, you know we've got. Uh, Yaya Diaby waiting in the wings here. Let's do a little uh, Celsius uh, hit real quick, Matt, and then we'll, we'll bring Yaya on. Yeah, let's do it up. I am actually wearing a Celsius shirt today, a Celsius polo to be more specific, because I'm a big fan of Celsius. Of course, Celsius is the presenting sponsor of the Pewter Report podcast. We always try to keep the vibes high on the show. I know the vibes are higher when we get the likes of Will Golston on the show and Yaya Diaby, who's about to be joining us. Of course, Frosty Dennis on yesterday's show as well. Check out some of the great flavors, the great vibes of Celsius, the Galaxy and the Astro vibe are some of the new ones. Uh, my personal favorite is the Arctic vibe. Tropical and peach vibe is great too. And don't sleep on the Cosmic vibe either. So if you need to know where to find a Celsius energy drink, go to the store locator on the Celsius website, punch in your address, and it'll tell you the closest geographical location where you can pick one up. Could be a Walmart, a Target, a health and fitness store, or if you're lucky enough, it might just be your bodega. Bodega. And once you keep going to your bodega and you know you love Celsius and you want more, but you don't want to make a thousand trips back and forth to the store, I get it. Makes total sense. Well, you can buy it in bulk if you go to Amazon. I'd recommend getting that variety pack because variety is the spice of life. And you heard me talk about all these great different flavors of Celsius. So go to Amazon, click on the subscribe and save, and you can have it sent to your place of residence whenever you want. You're in charge. You're the captain. Just make Celsius your number one pick during this draft season. Celsius, the official energy drink of the Pewter Report podcast. And now, without further ado, let's see. I think his, I think he's there. Yep, here we go. 
Tampa Bay Buccaneer outside linebacker Yaya Diaby rejoins the Peter Report podcast. Yaya, how are you doing today, man? How you guys doing? How you doing? <laughs> Excellent. Fantastic. Glad to be back, man. Glad to be back. Yeah. Yeah, you, know, you know, you had uh, a sensational rookie season. You're just getting some props there from Big Will, Will Golston. Uh, real quick, what what is what has he meant to you? You're, I think, right next to him in the locker, you know, room, and and uh, what what have you been able to learn from a, a guy like like Will Golston during your rookie season? Um, shoot, Will, Will is everything to me. You know, um, his locker being like right by me and Kalaji, you know, I always, every time I see him, I always say, OG, OG. And he like, he like, man, one day you'll be an OG. So, (laughs) so, so he like, so, but I learned so much from him, you know, just, um, just being, you know, more violent, more violent. It got, it got to a point where he was like, he was like, hey man, it was like the the timing period where I was about to get the you know the starting spot. He was like, yeah. he was like, man, just just be more violent. And that picture is so funny because yeah, we talked we talked about that picture. He was like, he was <laughs> like, um, he was like, dang, I'm thinking I'm about to get the the tackle and you come out of nowhere and, and take it from me. <laughs> so every time I see that picture, I laugh because because I took I took Will TFL, but. But he's such a great OG to me, you know. Um, he helped me with certain things, like, like with my with the way I wrap my hand now. Now I put like a extra thing in my in my you know glove just to help me out with you know wrist problems and all that, you know. Mm. He's been in the league for so long, yeah. so so he just he just give me like little pointers like that. So will will mean a lot to me. That's very interesting. Uh, We just got Will's rendition of it. That Thursday night game in Buffalo, big game for you as well. You got your first career sack on on Josh Allen. But very curious because Will had an interception in that game. It's not very often that a defensive lineman records an interception. What was going through your mind when Will made that big play? And and what about everyone else on the defense as as it was going down? Man, when he he got that pick, I was like, I was like, dang, he got up there because he was the only one who really like jumped forward. And I was yeah. like, dang, I was like, dang, Will, <laughs> Will got up there. And then they <laughs> went in the end zone and did the little celebration, the little boat thing. I wanted yeah. to run, run and go do it. But, you know, that was, I, I was like, nah, I don't think I could do that. But, <laughs> but I wish I, I wish I could have went out there and celebrated with him because that was, that was awesome because he actually went up and went and got it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Speaking of celebrations, man, your sub zero celebration at the end of the year where you, you freeze Kalaja, right? A little little Mortal Kombat. You freeze him and then do the karate kick and stuff. That was that's one of the best uh low key celebrations, I think, in the NFL today. What was the origin of that? And is that something you're gonna continue to do with with every sack you get? Yeah, it just depends on if you know Kalaja wanna keep continuing the <laughs> To, yeah, be, to be my be my be my partner partner in it but <laughs> yeah. but yeah i definitely um uh, want to keep you know just keep doing that celebration and hopefully it'll just keep getting out there and more people will see it and but it's a it's a really cool cool celebration yeah it is you and i talked at the end of the season in the locker room about what this off season was going to be like for you and And uh, you said, you know, you wanted to, I mean, you're fast and you're strong, right? But you really wanted to work on your agility and your flexibility and your being able to bend a little bit better, bend that arc a little bit on your pass rush. Have you been able to kind of achieve that this offseason? And what type of training have you been doing that's been a little different, right? There's no combine training this year. There's no senior bowl to have to to plan for. It's just, you know, full tilt buccaneer. But what have you been able to do? to take your game to the next level this off season as you head into the off season program at one buck place? Oh, um, well, I actually started, you know, getting into um, Pilates with, uh, with Joe. So I started doing Pilates and it's been helping me out so much with just core, core, just improving my core, improving my, um, you know, my hip flexors and everything and my ankle, like every little muscle that, people are, you know, sleep on and don't try to improve on. So I've been trying, I've been doing that and it's been, it's been going real good, real good. 
How different is that from like your typical workouts that you'll do as you're getting ready for the season and even in season? Is it kind of like a new experience working out that you haven't gone through before? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cause it's funny because you know when you do Pilates they put you in like weird position that you like dang I don't know if I can do this but you just do it just to you know improve improve yourself so so yeah it's been it's been a little task but but it's, it's it's been fun though you've had some opportunities not just to put some hard work in this off season but also to have a little fun time as well uh, Nathan Elliott says enjoyed meeting you yeah, yeah, on the Bucks fan cruise. Congrats on the Bud Light Water Volleyball Championship victory. How much fun was that? We're actually going to be partnering up with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers cruise and promoting that this upcoming season to try to get even more Buccaneer fans out there. But you guys had a great turnout. I think 15 players this year, including yourself. How much fun was that? And are you going to are you looking forward to next year's already? Yeah, yeah, man. That cruise was amazing, man. When I tell you the fans, oh my God, I man, I love the fans, man. Like everybody was so nice and and just so welcoming, and it was just so awesome to just be around around those guys because you know all they see us is with our helmets on. They don't yeah, see right. us, you know, without our helmets. So just inter- interacting with most of those um, fans, it was it was awesome. It was awesome, and the volleyball the volleyball matchup was awesome. You know, just just yeah, it was just awesome all around. Just spending that time with my teammates as well. Was it, it was, your first time on a cruise? Yeah, that was my first time ever yeah. on a cruise, and I was like, I like, wow, this is this is fun. It's like a hotel <laughs> on water. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> who was the uh, who's the MVP of the volleyball game? Who was who's the true key to victory? Well, I don't want to say it, but you know, I, I feel like I was the I was yeah, the MVP. slamming it. <laughs> yeah, man. Hey, I, I, I just some competitive nature just came out of me, and I was like, yeah, I gotta, I gotta win, cause, cause I, it's so funny, cause I was actually like, like the second to last pick, so I was like, oh, oh wow, chip, chip on I your shoulder. Chip, I got a chip on my shoulder, you know. I gotta, <laughs> hey, I got, I gotta, I gotta show out now. So, but it was, it was super fun. It was super fun. Speaking of um, awards and accolades, you actually got uh, announced today, and congratulations, that you yeah. were the Senior Bowl Rookie of the Year. So congratulations on that. What does that mean to you to, to get that award? Man, it means a lot because the Senior Bowl helped me out a lot throughout my whole draft process, you know, just going there and showcasing my abilities that – certain certain you know scouts and certain teams yeah. was like we don't know if he can do this we don't know if he can do this and the senior bowl you know they helped me out a lot to help me get out there more so i i appreciate those guys i will always appreciate them and and i'm so honored to you know receive receive the award with um actually one of my one of my close close teammates that i actually went to junior college with um byron young yeah. At the Rams, so so that's really awesome to receive that with him. You know, you, you know, you you really showed out at the Senior Bowl last year, and you know, we we talked before we do this thing called Bucks Best Bets with all of our draft previews, and we had you as a Bucks Best Bet at the edge rusher position, and the Bucks drafted you made us look good. Um, but the interesting thing is, uh, Warren Sapp was at the Senior Bowl uh, for one day. And I always kind of lean on Warren. He's busy this offseason with Colorado. But in years past, I've leaned on, leaned, leaned on him for his expertise when it comes to looking at the defensive linemen and, and the pass rushers. And he said, uh, this Yaya Diaby guy from Louisville, he's the guy out of all of the senior bowl defensive linemen. He's the one that stands out to me, man. This is the guy to look out for, you know. And did you have a chance to, to meet Warren on, on the, the cruise? Yeah, I did, man. He was actually he was actually one of he was on my team. Okay. So, yeah. so we got to go. so we got to um compete compete together on the volleyball. So great guy. Great guy. when you look at, at this offseason compared to, you know, last year, right? Where you're you're at the combine blowing everybody away with that forty yard dash time, you know, and, and fresh off your your senior season at, at Louisville. Um what has what the mindset been? Is it, is it a little bit more of, of kind of like calm and, and at ease because you're focused on 
being a buccaneer and, and honing your craft rather than, you know, this time last year, you didn't know where you were going. You didn't know where you were going to live and which team you were going to go to. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> last year was around this time was a stressful, a stressful time. And I'm just, I'm just really blessed that, you know, Tampa Bay and the whole organization took the chance to, you know, draft me. And now, now I'm, like you guys said, I'm at, you know, at ease. And now, now I know what to expect and what, what the coaches want out of me and what my teammates want out of me. So now I can actually focus on just ball and, and it just, it makes everything better. And it just, you know, put me at ease, but also amps me up, you know, just to, cause for me being a player, I am, I'm, I'm never, you know, satisfied. You know, I feel like my rookie year was a amazing, amazing step to where I'm trying to go. And, you know, so for me, I just want to, you know, just keep improving every day, just keep improving. It don't matter if I'm working on my ankle one day or, or stretching one day or or anything. I just want to improve myself and just be the best for the for the Bucks team. To add on top of that, is there anything specifically? I know you talked about doing Pilates that, to help with certain things, but is there anything specifically that you want to add to your game this season, whether it's, I don't know, getting more tackles for loss or another pass rushing move to keep the, you know, the offensive tackle guessing? What do you want to add to really bring yourself to that next level? Yeah, I just want to, I just want to add more, just, um, just ability to, you know, just bend more and just add a little, a little tool, like, like just double swipe or, mm -hmm. or, you know, push and pull little stuff like that, just to improve on, because, you know, and, and our defense, you know, they, they have me in the three a lot. So, and I feel like with going against guards, me being the player I am, I feel like I got an edge on them. So so I just want to improve on everything, just not working on the edge, but also if I got to line up on the center or if I got to line up yeah. on the guard, I can mm -hmm. find ways to just beat those guys. So I just want to just add add more tools. And, you know, that's why, that's why I'm glad I have teammates like, you know, Kalaja, you know, someone who's like, dude that's that's what he lives and breathes you know so so just having him to just work with this off season where we don't have to worry about the um the draft and all that we could just work on ourselves and working on getting better to be a to impact this team in a good way so so i'm i'm really excited for that you know i'm showing my age here kalaja this, this is gonna be my 30th year covering the tampa bay buccaneers year 30 okay wow yeah, but the reason I say that is because I walked in the door with 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 two guys back in 1995 when I started covering this team, Derek Brooks and Warren Sapp. Both were first-round picks. And the one thing that stood out to me with those guys coming in, now, it was a much different Buccaneer team. They were the Yuccaneers back then, not the Buccaneers, not the division champions. These were the doormats in their division at the time. And, and they came in, and they were always together almost conspiring towards greatness, right? And it was really those two guys, and you throw in a Hardy Nickerson, and a couple of years later, a Rondé Barber, you know, and, and you had Paul Gruber on the offense and Mike Allstott on the offense, and they just kind of willed this thing through great play and uh, and determination, you know, to uh, to shed that Yuccaneers label and become the Buccaneers and become a force in, in the NFL and certainly in the NFC. And it's like, you know, what, whether it was in the hallway or whether it was in the locker room or on the practice field, you and Kalijah remind me of Brooks and Sapp in the way that you guys are always kind of talking ball, always conspiring, always plotting. I, am I reading that the right way? Yeah, you're reading it perfect. Like, like that's, like that's my guy. You feel me? Like we have, we, um, I love all my rookie class, but it's like it's just like four of us that really like together like most of the time, me, Kalaja, Jose, and um boss. Yeah. So so yeah, so we're always together and you know, just always finding ways to, you know, improve, you know, and you know, like boss boss would 
nitpick a little bit and be like, oh, you guys, you guys can do this a little bit better or you guys can do this to help me out. And I can do this to help you guys out. So it's just it just all 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 thing. And I'm super blessed to have a, a rookie class that we have because all the guys wanna win. You know, all the guys wanna win, all the guys wanna contribute. And and I feel like I feel like that's what you need and everyone's hungry. That's what you need to have have a team go to the promised land. And you know, it's going it's gonna take some work, but I feel like we're we're going the right right direction. And I, I think your rookie class is off to a great start. Some of the guys you mentioned, like Elijah, what he did as a rookie, you had seven and a half sacks. Cody Mouk started from the first game of the season all through the whole year. The last time we had you on, Yaya, it was right before you had your playoff game against the Philadelphia Eagles. And I mean, what a better way to start your playoff career than how you guys defeated Philadelphia. You stopped the tush push, and obviously the defense was great. And then you fought extremely hard to the bitter end um, against the Lions. How important was that, um, that just getting that playoff experience so early into your career, and especially that win against the Eagles, how great was that, especially in Tampa in front of the home fans? Man, the, the, Eagles, the Eagles win was like – super super great because you know they got us at the beginning of the season and and we and i don't know what it was but everybody was putting it in the air they like we're gonna see the eagles again and i'm like yeah we're gonna see them again and the next time we see them it's gonna be a different ball game and everybody went in went in with that mentality and it just happened to be the a playoff game and everybody went in that in that game with that mentality, like, oh yeah, they not they not getting nothing on us, and and it was just it was just a whole a whole the atmosphere was amazing. I'm talking like I never heard the 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 um the crew the crew fans yell that loud. I never seen so many people in 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 that stadium, and it was just super exciting for that to be me and my my rookie fellas. Um, first first game first playoff game it was it was awesome you know the, the next week wasn't uh wasn't the, the i should i should say the revenge tour ended a little prematurely right you got revenge against the eagles didn't quite come out the way you wanted it to against uh, the lions kalaja had a really good postseason with the sack and a half including this one here at jared goff um how how much is it is that drive you guys the lions got the best of you twice they got to the NFC Championship game, which is a, a game you guys want to be in next year to get you to the Super Bowl. And now you face them again. They're on the schedule one more time up in Detroit. You get to go back and and maybe extract some revenge. But uh, is that is that game still lingering in your mind? Does that leave a bad taste in your mouth? You you kind of can't wait for the schedule to come out to find out when that game is going to be played? Yeah, yeah, totally, man. Detroit, thought I was just saying Detroit is a – a great team, you know, um, all the all the people on that team, like great guys, but but it does linger. Like I can't wait to you know see the schedule and just see when we gonna play them and and how we gonna prepare for them because I know I know Coach Bo is gonna dial some good stuff up just playing them another um, another time, you know, come yeah. next year. And I just know I just know we gonna be. We're gonna be ready, and I know, I know. Just like I said, the way we're going, going, I feel like come that game, it's the revenge is gonna be, it's gonna be brutal. <laughs> I like the sound of that. That's got to be music to the Buccaneer fans' um, uh, ears. And you mentioned Todd Bowles, right? Uh, he, it's, it's one thing to put together a game plan on a week to week basis, and you look at the game plan that that he put together against the Eagles. I mean, it was masterful, right? I mean, to, to hold the Eagles to one touchdown, only nine points. You stop the tush push, as Matt said. Um, but for, for whatever reason, it's just been a little bit more difficult uh, to solve Jared Goff, you know, and, and to, to slow down that, that Lions uh, offense. But, but now with, the, with an entire offseason, knowing that they're going to be on the schedule again, and you've got film – playing Goff and Amon Ross St. Brown and these guys twice last year, you know that Todd Bowles is gonna have he's gonna have the 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 creative juices flowing, right? 
Yeah, yeah. That's the, yeah, that's what I was saying. Like I, I I know that for a fact that, you know, that's how it was when we played when we played the Eagles. Um he he just uh he just went in his bag as as we yeah. would say. He he went he went in his bag and, and actually dialed some really good stuff up and and it was just it was so awesome because I'm like, dang. He like it was one play where you would see me at mid, uh, middle linebacker, and you like, yeah. dang, what the heck? So, so it's little yeah. stuff like that. Like the dude is the, he's such a genius, and I, I'm just blessed to be in the position to be in his defense, and and I'm just excited for what he has in store for me and the rest of my teammates next year. To pick up on that real quick, and I, I, I let you get one in here, Matt. But I, do, yeah. I want to pick up on that that point when when you know coaches installing these particular plays during the week right and it's got Vita Vea and Kalasha Kansi at defensive ends right yeah <laughs> <laughs> and, and and you and Joe Tryon Schwenka or you know Nelly or somebody in the middle right um what's going through your mind how how big and wide are your eyes getting when you see the creativity and and, and not just you know yeah 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 be edge rusher but being able to play a lot of different things drop in coverage you know being a middle linebacker, things like that. How how exciting is that when you when when you see these plays being presented in in the the meeting rooms for the first time? Man, it'd be super exciting because when we're in the meeting room and we're actually seeing it drawn up, we like we like, dang, now Kalaj is over there. Now now I'm inside and we can switch a rule or or. Or is a play where me and me and uh, Levante is switching. It's 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 just like you like dang like like they real deal and they're like real deal dialing stuff up and putting us in the best position to be successful. And and yeah, it's just like like I said, he's a genius. Yeah, I, I was just gonna say one of the, my favorite things I saw was like when Levante. It wasn't even last season, but it, throughout the years with Todd Bowles there. Like one with Levante David on the edge, and you can't help like you're watching the game seriously, but you can't help just be like, "This is awesome." Levante David's lined up in a completely different position, and it just shows that um that really anything is possible when when Todd Bowles is dialing something up. You had mentioned uh, watching film and things a couple of moments ago. We had Voss on the show yesterday, and he talked about all the film that he's watching, and obviously he's watching himself, but he said he also likes to watch a lot of the great linebackers in the league at the moment i was curious for you yaya if you're just watching yourself your, the team your teammates or do you watch some of the best edge rushers in the league as well man man it's so funny because they um they collected our they collected everybody tablet um before the before we went home and and i was staying in, i was staying in tampa but then I asked them, I said, can I just can I just get my, you know, my tablet just so I can keep watching film and keep watching other stuff. And it was so funny because um, our video guy, Justin, I just kept hitting them up every week. I'm like, every like <laughs> anybody, anybody who came to mind, like Max Crosby, Nick, Nick Bosa, um, it's another guy, it's another guy that's that's been it's just about to be his third year, um, boy, in my fate. Like, because mm -hmm. we yeah. got, like, a similar body and a similar, yeah. you know. So I watch every, everybody, like, Daniel Hunter, like, everybody. Like, I was literally, like, if you see my tablet right now, I have, like, Rashad, Gary. I have everybody, mm -hmm. everybody that, like, just to help me to, you know, just see, like, how, the, how those guys see stuff and how they pass rush against because, Basically, we all play the the same team, so yeah. so you know, yeah. like this year we're playing a whole different side, like Kansas, Vegas. We playing all those guys, so it's it's fun to just watch guys who went against those guys and and uh, and the impact they had in that game just to watch it. So so yeah, I got I have a whole a whole list. I have at least like ten ten guys that I've been been watching this whole time. Todd Bowles said that that for you to take the next step and that you can become a double digit sacker, but what that's going to require is you really getting in the chess match, right, with your offensive tackles, setting up moves, reading him, knowing how he sets, right, 
to know whether you're going to go inside with the spin or with a go step or continue with an outside or just drive right through them with, with the bull rush. Right. It, it, is, is that, does that resonate with you in terms of, of the next step for you is, is get, developing that rush plan and knowing when to use certain moves to set up other moves? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Um, my exit meeting with um, Coach Bowles, it went similar like that. He was like, he was like, um, you had a very, a very good, good year, but for you to take that next step, you know, you would have to, you would have to get in, um, get mentally, mentally stronger. And I feel like that's what I have to work on. Just like you saying, like just knowing when to set somebody up and, and that's what I've been trying to do this whole time, you know, watching, watching film with my, with my coach George, uh, with coach George and just, Mm -hmm. you know, just figuring out how to watch film better and how to actually know, know what I'm watching, not just watching it. Cause me, I watch a lot of film, but I want to know, okay, if the tackle, he's doing this a lot, when he get tired, does he put his hand on his knee and yeah. and does he use his outside arm when he gets tired or mm. little stuff like that. Little so tendencies. Really, yeah, yeah, little tendencies. So it's really mental and that's what I'm working on, you know, like I just want to just improve and just keep improving. And, you know, if you can get an edge on somebody, somebody like that, mm-hmm. then, then you good. Yeah, um, one of the, uh, the guys uh, that you mentioned, one of your your quartet that you hang out with, Jose Ramirez, right? Spent the year on the practice squad. R- really, uh, you know, we had him on the on the program. We kind of expected him to have a really good preseason. He gets hurt in that that first preseason game, almost like Servassier, right? Where he missed the next two games. That was some valuable reps that he missed. And as a result, you know, Marquise gets on the active roster and he's on the practice squad. But but man, Jason Light, Todd Bowles, they were raving about. Now, not just Marquise, but also Jose and the fits that he was giving Tristan Wirfs and Luke Gedeke yes. in practice. Can you tell everybody firsthand how Jose was developing behind the scenes and how he's looking this off season? He said he's been working on his body. Yeah, yeah, man, it's it's so crazy because I came um, I came back from I came back um, came back to Tampa and I seen Jose and I was like. I was like, wow, Jose, like you really been working on your body. Like, like you look totally different and it's different, but in a good way. And mm-hmm. he's moving faster and he's having, he has a, a quick twitch, you know, but, but last year, last year he helped, he helped us out a lot, a lot with giving Tristan and Luke a great look. I'm talking a great look, like they'll do certain things and practice you like, Oh my God. Like, okay. Like, but you can see that you can see that he just continued to improve and improve. And, and that's what I was saying. Like, those are guys that I, you know, I want in my corner, somebody who Mm want to come, come work to work every day and want to improve and want to get each other better. Like me and Jose, we talk like like every day is Mm -hmm. whatever, whatever we can do to improve on each other and just help each other out. And, do little little things that we can talk about to help each other. We just keep doing it. and and right now, right now, he's looking, he's looking great. One of the new additions to your your team this off season has been Randy Gregory. I don't know if you had a chance to to meet with him fresh off of a Super Bowl. Unfortunately, the 49ers lost for him. But uh what what have you what are your first impressions of Randy Gregory and what he can bring to this room from an experience and maybe like a, a mentoring standpoint? Um, well, we haven't, we haven't um, met him yet, but he's been in our, in our um, meetings, meetings. Um, I think they got him like in a little zoom. So oh, he okay. can see, mm-hmm. he can see what we're talking about and, and engaging with us as well. But, but when he was at, when he was at um, Dallas, Mm-hmm. He was one of the guys that I always, always looked at, um, and and he was and he was killing it. He was killing it, and and now that he's in our room and he has been in different schemes, and and I just know from where he's at, he knows so much, and he can help a guy like me, a guy like Watts, a guy like um, Joe. You know, because you know I feel like with Joe, like Joe still still got some 
improving and and Joe Joe me and Joe talk all the time and Joe yeah. Joe's like he's not at where he want to be and he feel like he can keep improving and and I know having somebody like Randy in our room he would definitely help us out and definitely put us in the right position and not just get him better but also get get the whole team get the whole team better what's it been like kind of just being back in the building as this off season program gets underway man i missed it man i like you take me away from the building for for too long like i i don't like it like i like i have to be in the building like so it's it's been good man it's just good seeing the guys back and just just it's a lot of guys that actually showed up you know and and all the all the rookies, everybody's here, and and we're just you know getting each other better, and and it's just awesome to see. James Hamilton says, "I am a University of Kentucky fan, but I'm cheering for you in the Bucks. Yeah, I live in Louisville, so you know the rivalry. You know, and, and yeah. I and I found that I was saying it the wrong way. You know, I, I we texted earlier this off season. I, I went to Louisville. I was saying mm-hmm. Louisville. I was wrong. Yeah, I, Louisville. I, yeah, yeah." <laughs> A lot of people, a lot of people. That's what happened when I first got to. Louisville, I was like, I was like Louisville, and it was like, no, no, it's Louisville. So, so yeah, and it's so funny because the um, the new OC, the new OC was um, yeah, with Kentucky. So my first interaction with him, you know, he said hey and and all that. Then he was like, hey, yeah, yeah. It was down. I was like, oh, I was like, I was like, okay, okay. So I, I was like, okay, I like, I like this guy. I was like, I was like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you an offensive line some work this time. <laughs> 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 <It's OTA. laughs> a little, a little rivalry in in the building's not too bad. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. Um, speaking of of Louisville, the Cardinals. Um, what about uh, someone like like Jawar Jordan joining? Uh, the uh, the Buccaneers. How, how would you feel about having a couple more Cardinals in the building? And is this guy somebody that could bring the juice from the running back perspective? Man, Jawar, if you guys if you guys sit down and watch watch Jawar highlights, it speaks for itself. Yeah, and just the way he practices and the way he does come to come to work every day. Like I remember because he came he came like a year or three years ago and and I was just like dang this guy is super explosive like they had him on on special team and I was like dang this guy is like super super explosive and I'm just so happy that he got to you know he got to this this was his team this year like he got to really showcase his abilities and and you seen seen what he can do you know he had like a whole a lot of a lot of fifty plus break breakout um touchdowns. So yeah. the guy is like super explosive. And you know, I'm just I'm just praying that he lands in a in a good good spot. Good spot. Yeah. Have you been in contact with any of your Cardinals teammates? Have the Bucks shown any interest in any of them or or any I know you you're familiar with a lot of college players having, you know, played in college recently. Uh, do you know of anybody that the Bucks have had in for a top thirty visit or have interviewed? Uh, um, nah, nah, I haven't, I haven't seen any guy that that I know. I um, I think I seen one of the Florida State, the Florida State receiver, Florida yeah, State receiver in the yeah. in the building the other the other day, but that's that's about it. But um, I hope I hope what you call it. I hope that I hope they have some interest in in my teammate, my former teammate, Jarvis Bradley. Dude yeah. is dude is a a freak of nature. Like dude yeah. is like he, he had a is, great senior he, pool. He the is cornerback. Him. Yeah, yeah, he is him. Like his his first year with us, you know, he had a, he had a little cast on his hand, but mm. he he was still doing awesome. And now now that he's back to himself and without the injuries you could you see at the senior bowl what he can do so you know having guys like that in the locker rooms people who stay out of trouble and you know just want the best best for the team you you will want a guy like that on your team yeah 
Exactly. Well, yeah, yeah. It's always a pleasure chatting with you, yes. man. We really appreciate you coming on the Peter Report podcast and uh, and 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 for for making some time for Will too at the beginning of the show. We appreciate you you sharing uh, the day with us, and it's always good to talk defense. Yeah, anything. Defensive lineman, you know me. Anything so. for OG, man. I'm yeah. glad he got he got his time. Exactly, and, and it's great you. to see him back in in the building and and all of that. And uh, we really appreciate having you on, man. Thank Thank you, you so yeah. much, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, guys. All right, well, th- this this has been a heck of a show, man. We really yes, it has, you know, it, it's all timer. <laughs> it really is, yeah. First double header. I think it's the first box it double is. header in the history of the Peter Report podcast. So I must say it's an honor uh, making history with Will and Yaya and you, Scott, and yeah. um, all the Peter people that have been with us through this whole run. Exactly, yeah. It's, it's it's one of those things when we have the Buccaneer players on, we try to find a couple questions or comments, but obviously we're, we're kind of here to – to listen, we're here to ask some questions and listen, yeah. and and so we don't have as much interaction. We didn't, we weren't able to do, um, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, uh, Red Fish, we appreciate the super chats. Yeah, um, couldn't get couldn't get to all of them, but certainly uh, appreciate your participation. You want to know uh, how a player like Hainsey handles people calling for them drafting their replacement around one, um, and then you asked as well. Uh, Will's literally gone from worst to first. Uh, was there a difference in the locker room with each week uh, and how this year's locker room has a feel? It seems like guys are ready to go. I mean, obviously, yeah. it's the start of the new season, but, you know, you heard Yaya say that he was hitting up the the guy that's in charge of the tablets, like, mm-hmm. day after day to go and get it. And I think the way that this team finished, I get it. They went 9-8, and eight and it's not the best way to win the division and get into the postseason, but they hit their stride at the end of the year, and yeah. I think they're focusing more – towards hey we got to that second round and we really could have gone to the nfc championship game versus kind of limped into the playoffs with the nine and eight so yeah. i think everyone's gonna be ready to go this year especially with everyone still kind of doubting the bucks again which mm-hmm. to me is crazy to think but hey i can't control what national media decides yeah it, well said matt and, and i think too when you look at at the fact that that um this team and, and you saw it with, with them bringing back pretty much everybody, right. Except for Devin white. And we, we told you before anybody did like middle of the season, he was not going to be back. P report was the first on, on the scene with that. And, and that certainly proved to be true. But I think Matt, th- this team is focusing on the six and two finish, right. Rather yes. than the nine and eight, it was, it's, it's the momentum that was created down that stretch that allowed them to, to beat a team with a better record, right? I mean, statistically better record, the Philadelphia Eagles. They came in here, and mm-hmm. after a 10-1 and one start, they were spiraling, and the Buccaneers just put the nail in the coffin. They did. And, and what they a better tagger. team. That, yeah, what a better team that to unleash the dagger, right, uh, mm-hmm. against than the Eagles. And uh, so I, I think that's what the Glaziers top down. That's what Jason Light and Mike Greenberg and John Spitek and Todd Bowles – that's what they're focusing on. This finish, the six and two finish, getting to that that divisional playoff game against kind of a little bit of a team of destiny, right? The Lions, you know, they were first time winning the division in you know a millennium or whatever it seems. Yeah, probably should have uh, beat the Niners in the NFC Championship game too. Probably should have had yeah. a pretty big lead until Sam Fran but came back. This was a team that was tied going into the fourth quarter against a team that just. You look at back in both of those games, the 20 to 6 loss back in week six, the 31 23 loss in Detroit in the playoffs. The Lions just had the Bucks number. And I think that's going to yeah. be Todd Bowles' mission is uh, focus on getting your team better. But then how do you beat the 49ers? How do you beat the Lions? If you want to, to run the NFC, you, you got to knock off uh, the you know the, the top guys. You, you got to beat the bullies, and right now th- those are the bullies. Uh, hey, in the yeah. Season. I mean, look at when the Bucks won in twenty twenty. They couldn't beat the Saints in the regular season. Didn't even come close to beating the Saints yes. in the regular well season. Said. And then, bam, postseason comes. Obviously, you got Tom Brady. You know what yeah. he does in the postseason. But yeah. you know they they exercised that demon, won that divisional round, won the next week, and yep. then took the Super Bowl in Tampa. Yep. So uh, a in lot Tampa. a lot of great things in front of them. And Todd sure. Bowles solved uh, Patrick Mahomes, right? He yes, solved Patrick Mahomes. And so he, that's what he has to do. He's got to solve Jared Goff the way that he solved Jalen Hurts and the Eagles offense. 
And I think that's going to be the next step. And the good news is he's got all off season to tinker and, and toy around and, and scheme hit the up lab, and, hit the yeah, lab hit the and lab. come up with new exotic looks. Exactly. Well, if you were looking to hit the lab when it comes to maybe selling your house, maybe you, you want to, to move, maybe you need to move. Well, there's only one place to turn, and you know who that is. That's Eric Gross and the Eric Gross Group, the official realtor of Peter Report. Eric is a diehard Tampa Bay fan and avid Peter Report reader. He knows this area like the back of his hand. His father was stationed at McDill Air Force Base. So whether it's in the Tampa Bay area or even the state of Florida, he's well-versed in the real estate market. So take advantage of that. Get Eric on your team. Draft him and his lovely wife, Caitlin. And uh, you will be set. You will be set up for success, whether you're looking to buy a house or sell your house. What I want you to do is visit their website, housesinfla.com. Check out their inventory. Look at their open house schedule. You can find that on their social media, which is Eric Gross Group on Facebook and Instagram. Or better yet, give Eric a call. Talk a little draft. He's well-versed when it comes to Tampa Bay football. Give him a call at 513-907-4271 after you chat about your favorite team, these Peter Pirates. Then you can talk real estate. He'll be happy to entertain both topics. But again, Eric Gross, our MVP when it comes to the realtor of choice for Peter Report, readers, listeners, and viewers with the Eric Gross Group. And guys, we're not done just yet. We've had a great week so far uh, with awesome guests, and we're going to do uh, a finale of the week with a live Bucks mock draft. Uh, may have to work around some scheduling with Marcus Whitman. Not exactly sure if he's going to be able to be on the show tomorrow. But nonetheless, we will be doing a live Bucks mock draft regardless. So um, had a very fun time the last time we did a live Bucks mock draft on the show. And looking forward to doing it again tomorrow. So that will be going on uh, Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern. Of course, can't forget about the uh, Pewter Report tailgate show. Yeah. Not tailgate show. The draft show. Yeah. You can tailgate for it if you want to. Yeah. The Pewter Report draft show that's coming up on day one of the NFL draft that Thursday, April 25th. We do it an hour before the show starts. Um, it's on our YouTube channel, so make sure you check it out right there. We do it for all three days, but of course, we start with day one. Talking about your Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the NFC South how the Bucs approach this draft, and a whole lot more. So if you're not already doing so, please follow us on all of our social media on X, Facebook, and Instagram. We are at Pewter Report, and our YouTube channel is Pewter Report TV. We got the podcast four times a week with fantastic guests like you've seen this week. We do various clips. We got shorts. We got everything for everybody on our YouTube channel. So please like and subscribe. Uh, we're trying to get closer to 14,000. Can't do it without you guys. Um, you know, like I said, hit that like button. Takes two seconds to subscribe. Just bam, hit that button. Hit that yep. button. Just lets you know when we're doing stuff. That's it. It's just a friendly, friendly reminder. We got Absolutely. one last question from Felix. Yep. Uh, when will you release your last mock draft? Josh, Capo, and myself are working on it right now. It will come out on Monday. That will be the topic of Monday's Peter Report podcast. I would show you the graphic, but that would spoil the fun because we have yes. – who our first round draft pick will be for the Buccaneers. It's different. It's a different guy. And, and that's going to be on Monday show. So we're going to have our final seven round Bucks mock draft on Monday show. Then on Tuesday, we're going to be having all of our Bucks best bets to keep you updated. We'll talk about the players we think the Buccaneers are honing in on at every position during that show. That'll be a fun one on Tuesday. No show on Wednesday. We got to rest our voices because we, as, as Matt said, have three draft shows lined up in a row for you guys Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. This is the place to be yes. for all of your Buccaneer draft needs. I think uh, Nathan Elliott says the best history was made. Woo -woo. This may have been one of the best podcasts ever. I, I think that's the case. Matt. Yeah, absolutely. It's It's got to be up there in the pantheon of uh, great Peter Report podcast. So we're going to try to do it even better tomorrow. So until then, for Scott Reynolds, I'm Matt Matera saying thanks, everybody, for watching. And we'll see you tomorrow on Thursday at 4 p.m. for another edition of the Pewter Report podcast. Out. Out. Thanks, Will and Yaya.